Guys, I'm going to try to do a video on how I do the crank cut option to do oversized signs in light burn. It took me a couple months to figure it out because I couldn't find a really good video that showed me what I needed to do. So I'm going to kind of show you guys how I do it and maybe it makes sense to you. Obviously, upload your design or whatever you're doing. Uh, this is going to be about five and a half foot long, but my board that I have ripped down is only about four foot. So I, right here, I'm just ungrouping the letters that can be. This is simply just to make the sign a little bit bigger. First, I mirror my image and then I click the period key and that will automatically change it to um, whatever direction you want it to be in. Next is to split your image up. So I'm just taking a square and then just putting it where I want to split it at. And this is pretty simple. You can select it all and then push the tools and then go down to cut and that'll cut your shape. One thing to mention here, and this has made it a lot easier for me to figure out, use your arrow keys and just move things off your canvas. This will help like when you split your image that you're not um, accidentally shifting anything so no lines doesn't line up. All I'm doing now is just dragging the last half of the lettering down onto my canvas just to frame it so I can make sure that none of like the Y's or the L's come off the board um, so it's all centered. I do this beforehand because I've done it before that I'll go onto the last half or whatever and then like a Y, it accidentally clips off the bottom half or the L accidentally gets clipped off. Just because when I rip down my boards to fit in my vehicle, I have to rip it down to two foot. So I want to make sure that all the lettering is on that board. Now I'm just pulling that last half of the lettering off the canvas again. And now I'm going to make my uh, targets. If you don't know how to make a target, just draw a circle and use your pen tool and make your markings. I do always use the centering tool just to make sure everything's lined up perfectly group your target together because when you go to the print and cut option it won't if it's not grouped it won't let you select it so make sure that you have that grouped and then size it down to whatever size most of the targets that i do i try to make a little under a half an inch just so i have plenty of room to see where i'm lining them up at later now just place your targets i try to make them pretty close to my lines towards the end of um where i cut the shape then just select it duplicate it and then move it to the other side so you have two targets after that, you should have everything lined up and you can frame it. All right, so I've got it framed and everything and I've fixed my settings where I needed them to be. I'm just gonna push start because I've already got my stuff loaded in here. Just using a fourth inch uh, birch wood. And I've got these little magnetic risers. And when I put these in here, I kind of line them up to the edge of my honeycomb just so when I bring it back out or whatever, it stays in line and I kind of have a guide of where I need to be at. Now that we're back in light burn and that first half is cut, you'll pull through your board and we can start aligning the second half. It's important to mention here is the reason I use my arrow keys is so I can really line up those because if there's any kind of gaps in it, it will pull through to the laser and you'll have a gap and it won't connect. So I just butt those lines up together and then I'll use my arrow keys and drag everything down. And then you can select the first half and then just drag it off the canvas. Just so the next thing I'll do is I'm gonna have to cut this into thirds because it is such a big sign. So I'm gonna repeat that same process, add the square, cut the shape, and then I'll show you when I do my targets the next time. Here, I'm just duplicating my targets and then dragging them to the end of the second half. So when I go to line up my third, I can repeat the same process again and align those targets. This is where I got pretty mixed up when I started doing this. So it is just like, mirror so the first target you're going to select is going to be the one that is closest to your controller which is the right hand side but it'll be the left on your computer menu okay so i've got my first target selected here and this is going to be the one that's closest to my control panel so right there this is the one we're going to be lining up first but we need to drag out um our piece of wood and all i'm doing is just pulling this through until yeah, about right there because where the laser cutting area is. This is why I use these risers, like I said, to make sure that it kind of has a guide. So if the board moves any too much, then I know that this is supposed to be butted up right against here. So let's line up these targets. So you'll select your first target. Like I stated previously, it is mirrored. So it's going to be the left target that's on your computer menu, but the right target that is on your laser. I usually try to get a general area with my laser. It's not going to exactly line up by itself. At least mine doesn't. So I get a general area and then I pulse my laser just to see where it's at. And then I can go from there. Directly like, mess, uh, like lined up to 
the laser just because when I do this the light is kind of hard to tell where my laser dot is so when I pulse it right there you can see where my line is it's pretty much on the line but it needs to go to the left so I'm going to show you how to do that so this is my little menu that I have here so when you're aligning your targets to get your position um, so you line up your targets like on your laser as close as you can and then when you go into your uh, move menu you'll push get position and that button will show you the coordinates so if you need to go up on the y-axis then you'll need to subtract a decimal if you need to go down you'll add a decimal um, if you're on your x-axis and you need to go right then you subtract it if you need to go left you'll add it and you just have to be kind of um, it's kind of finicky so you'll have to try to line it up the best you can to the decimal and pulse it a few times just to see where it hits at so that is just food for thought so once you get a general area um, that is the get position so you'll push that button it'll give you the coordinates and then you can go up a decimal down to a decimal whatever you need to do to get the laser on the crosshairs you'll push set position one and then you'll click your second target and push jog and that should take you to your second target or pretty close it is important to know that when you move to that second target it doesn't update the position or the coordinate so you need to push get position to get your new uh, coordinate then repeat the same process to line it up set your position and push no scaling after that's done select everything and push start now let's see if these line up or not and any bit that they're off is going to mess up your lines so let's see if i got it right or not right there that I'm probably like one decimal off. So. Also important to note, I forgot to adjust my, my length from my laser to the material and you can see it's got a little bit bigger than it is over here. Now we're just going to repeat the same process. I'm going to select everything and move it back up. Just so when I move it off of my canvas again, everything stays in line. So once I get my third piece there, I align my targets and do the same thing. All right, I'm about to do my targets again and see if they line up. Good. Let's move to this one. Now before it starts cutting again, make sure that your material is set. I'm going to let that finish cutting and then I'm going to cut the the, the part of the sign. Um, I separate them because I can only get my sheets of wood um, four foot or a little bit over four foot to fit in my vehicle so I have to cut them down every time um, but I'll cut that on a separate piece that shouldn't need any sort of like um, print and cut option because it's not that long and then I'll put the T to the name. I know a lot of people are gonna ask why I separate those instead. I just have a lot of leftover scrap wood, so I just try to use as much of it as I can. And then I know it's a little bit more time consuming to do that, but it saves me material and money. Another thing I wanted to share with you guys, the reason when I started doing this, it took me so long to figure it out. Um, eventually I figured it out, obviously, but my bed was unlevel so make sure that your bed is completely leveled out when you start doing this or else half the sign's going to cut good and the other side half the sign is not going to cut right because the bed's uneven and these signs are so big most of them are where i have to rip down my sheets they're about 22 inches wide so that's another thing you want to watch out for um the print and cut option make sure that you're checking your or your pushing the get position uh, get position in the move menu every time that you are resetting like when you're moving from the first target to the second because if you don't it's gonna it's not gonna update for you so it's gonna stay at that first target position until you update it with the get position button that's another big thing here is the last part of the sign it's a little over four foot and the part of it so all together it's probably a good five and a half foot long if not more pretty good size sign so now 
I always leave this up to the customer if they want a cheaper option they can just have the single layer I always recommend to double it just for like so it's not so fragile um because you can see it's kind of floppy but there she is I hope this video helped you guys a little bit and if you have any questions let me know and I'll try to help you out the best I can